2021 regular season is in the books for the LSU football team. The Tigers finish strong inside a Tiger Stadium. They defeat Texas A&M 27-24 on Saturday night. Max Johnson hits Jare Jenkins for a 28-yard touchdown to put the Tigers ahead for good with 20 seconds to play. That capped off an unlikely 85-yard game-winning drive on the final possession of that game. LSU finishes the regular season 6-6. Six and six. They are bowl-eligible, Musso, but... Ed Ogeron will not coach LSU in a potential bowl game. Brad Davis is the interim coach if the Tigers do indeed play in a bowl. This was such a fun game. We made our predictions on Friday, and it kind of went the way that I thought it would on the scoreboard, but definitely not on the field. And I think LSU needs to be proud of the way that they finished the season, not necessarily on the win-loss column, but these guys went out there and they fought every single game the last five or six. And they could have won the Alabama game. They could have won the Arkansas game. But it was really nice to see LSU come through, make the clutch plays, and get a win at home in front of their fans. Obviously, it's been a very tough season if you're an LSU fan. And obviously, you were able to send Coach O out on a positive note. So a great performance by the LSU defense throughout the game. Great job by Max Johnson, who I thought struggled a lot in this one, but showed some serious toughness and some serious poise on that last drive. And Jare Jenkins, what more can you say? 100 plus yards, two touchdowns, great performance by LSU, and a great way to finish the season if you're a Tiger fan. It was, man. I mean, those those wins, it's always nice to beat Texas A&M, right? And that, you, you managed to beat A&M and Florida this year. Uh, now, of course, you look for a new head coach, but in the, in the immediacy, you do. You prepare for a bowl game. Uh, I thought the 19 seniors to send them out that way was really cool. To be able to send Coach O out that way was really cool. And they... The seniors, the impact they had on the game, man, it was <laughs> evident. You look at a guy like Jare Jenkins, eight catches, 169 yards, two scores, including the game winner. Uh, that's something – Jare Jenkins has had a, a, a handful of those games now in his career at LSU where, you know, he's kind of under the radar, but he's taken over a few and has kind of become the focal point of the offense in, in certain games. I know Arkansas last year is one that sticks out. Uh, he had a nice day against Florida this year and, of course, uh, sun, uh, sun Saturday as well against Texas A&M, and that was, man, that was incredible to, to see for him. He's had a, a well-documented story in his time at LSU coming for G, from Gina, so that was great. Damone Clark should win the butt kiss. We'll just keep saying it. Uh, better win the butt kiss. He is not just the most improved player on LSU's team, but arguably the most improved player in all of college football this year. Uh, the place he made it towards the end of that game, it really throughout, but towards the end of that game especially, another third down on the drive right prior to the final to get LSU the ball back. With one more shot, uh, the sack on second down to ice the game effectively against Zach Calzada, and just the job that he and just the job that he and Micah Baskerville did leading that defense against the run against A and M was incredible. I, we talked about it. That was going to be the way to stop. And that's why you stop any Jimbo offense, right? The run is such a focal point of his attack, and that was A and M's best arrow to shoot. Out of, you know, in a battle and. You got him to 54 yards rushing. They really never got it going. Uh, Devon A-Chain had that one drive in the second quarter where uh, they pulled to within three of LSU. He kind of really turned it on there running the ball. He had a nice day catching the ball as well. So, I mean, you, you struggled to hold him in check, but ultimately you held their entire running game in check. You forced Zach Calzada to beat you, and while he made some plays, it wasn't enough. And credit LSU's defense for that as well. And Damone Clark and Micah Baskerville in the middle leading the way. So many props to distribute here, and it has to start with Damone Clark. Like you said, he made his presence felt in this one, like he has every game here on the back end. And LSU's front seven as a whole played amazing. Like you said, in the second half, they got Arcane going in the passing game a little bit, but they pretty much shut down him and Spiller in the run game throughout the contest. And LSU had nine tackles for loss in this game, four sacks of Sack Calzada, two and a half of them were by Damone Clark, and two of them were on the final drive to ice the game. So I'm so happy Damone Clark got to finish his career the way that he did, and he cashed in on guaranteeing the win which he said they were going to win the game before and they did go out there and beat texas a&m but somebody else who i had to give props to muso is the crowd in tiger stadium because towards the end of that game it was already a scarce crowd but some people started filing out after arcane scored the go-ahead touchdown and the aggies went up 24 to 20 but it, it kind of felt like and i said this on a spanish broadcast it kind of felt like the people in the stadium were like the real lsu fans and although they, the stadium was half empty the explosion when jerry jenkins caught that touchdown is a moment that i'll never forget and i tweeted this out after the game and i'll reiterate it right now on the air these these kind of wins for lsu football are my favorite kinds of wins like when there's not too much to gain in the season in terms of like postseason destination or what bowl you're going to but think back to like 2009 versus arkansas that team wasn't very good that game went to overtime lsu had to grind it out and win the game 
field goal. 2013 versus Arkansas, similar to this. Anthony Jennings is in the game. You know, they had to go the length of the field at the very end. They go 99 yards. They win the game. Didn't do too much that season, but that was a moment I'll never forget. 2014 at Florida. Season's going hard. You're on the road. Florida's not doing too well either, but nobody's really giving you a shot to win the game. LSU goes out there. They win a close game on a 50-yard field goal, field goal by Colby Delahousey. I think back to 2017 against Auburn and against Florida after the loss to Troy, and I think of the game on Saturday night. I mean, it's like I said, not too much to play for except for pride, and clearly LSU has a lot of it, and everybody that was in the stadium that night I thought affected the game in the end, and I thought that that was a game that none of those people will ever forget. It's one that'll live on, that's for sure. I mean, and just because of, I guess, the, the moments that it did create. I, I will always say, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. I'd much rather be in contention for some things, but th- those wins are special for sure. And Different look, it's, it's, it's always, it's just always good to beat Texas a and Yes. Damone Clark led the defense. Ty- Ty- Tyron Davis Price in this game, 19 attempts, 84 carries. Okay, Ty Davis Price move, so I'm sorry. Oh, no, I wasn't laughing at that. I was laughing at something else. Oh, uh, okay. Well, TDP played like a champ. He made it to 1,000 yards on the season, which if you would have told me that a couple of months ago, I would not have believed you. And I don't think he's going to come back for his senior year. I think that he showed enough, and he has a lot to gain by going to the NFL, although maybe he can improve his draft stock. He left it all out there on the field, not just Saturday night, but throughout the season. And LSU... Although they didn't do too, too much in the running game, 36 carries for 106 yards, I thought they did just enough. And I thought TDP had an excellent finish to his career as an LSU Tiger, if indeed he does go to the NFL. People wanted Ty Davis Price bench for the freshman earlier in the season. I'm people. I, I mentioned it. I mean, but the fact is, nobody was running the ball then. And all he did was suit up every week and play his hardest every week. And after having people call for his benching in favor of true freshmen, he ends up setting the single se- the single game record for rushing at LSU and a win at Florida. Goes for 100 yards on the road at Alabama and reaches 1,000 yards. Like you said, no, of course not. You're not the only one. No, Mario, nobody. If you would have told anyone that, that that was going to be possible two months ago, no one believes you. Nobody. There's not a, not even the most optimistic LSU fans believe you that they could have had somebody reach 1,000 yards rushing. Ty Davis Price did that, and he did it out of just sure will to win and to compete, and he did. A couple more thoughts on the game before we get to break and talk NFL next segment. Uh, Jay Roy had an excellent game. He had an excellent end to the season. The stats aren't really there, although he did get a couple of sacks, but he's been so great in the run game for LSU and was again in this game. Neil Farrell as well. He made himself so much money towards the back end, and I heard a lot of LSU fans talking about Neil Farrell maybe not being an NFL-quality player, but I think that he showed that he is, and he was a huge part of LSU's success late in the season. And the last thought I have, we talked about this before the show, Trey Palmer, junior at LSU, coming off of his third season after this game. In this game, he had five catches, 64 yards, and that screen pass that he took to the house for his lone touchdown. But I think there's just so much untapped potential with Trey Palmer, just his speed and his football speed especially. You saw it early in his freshman year. He had the kickoff return against South Carolina. He had a few chances to get some punt return touchdowns. And offensively this year, I thought they'd do a little bit better job of getting him the ball in space. That didn't really happen throughout the year, but you did see it in this game. And I think you can see the impact that Trey Palmer can have and his potential at LSU if he chooses to stay. That screen pass was a thing of beauty. That was, I mean, that just, the speed was on full display. Yes, and I wish LSU would have called some more screen passes. I, I wish they would have got Trey Palmer the ball some more in space, but alas, good game for Trey Palmer. Uh, like I said, LSU's leading receiver in this game, Jeray Jenkins, eight catches, 169 yards, and two touchdowns.